Hey guys, it's Chloe. Welcome back or welcome to my channel. Today, I wanted to sit down and make a little bit of a different video for you guys tonight and basically just talk about everything I've learned and also stuff I wish I knew before buying a third gen Tacoma. In this video, I'm going to be covering as much as I can about maintenance, some basic advice for modifying your truck, some tips and tricks, and maybe some features you didn't know about the third gen Tacoma. And I'm going to talk about some common concerns and issues that some people have with the third generation Tacoma. I've had this 2019 Tacoma that I'm sitting in right now for over two and a half years and just from daily driving it, talking to other people that have third gen Tacomas and learning here from my own YouTube channel from you guys in the comments down below on all my videos, I feel like I've learned so much over the last couple of years. I pretty much wanted to consolidate all of that basic information here in one video to maybe help newer third gen Tacoma owners out. Just as a disclaimer, the Tacoma trim I have is a TRD off-road. It's the 3.5 liter V6 trim. So things might be a little bit different in your Tacoma, but I'll try to be as general as I can. By the way, I wanted to give a huge thank you to Haviland for sponsoring tonight's video. The oil you put in your truck is extremely important. And I'm gonna talk a little bit today about what makes Haviland a great choice for these third gen Tacomas. So let's start out with the topic you guys will probably find the most interesting because I do get a lot of questions about this on my channel and that's just basic advice for starting to modify your third gen Tacoma. I thought up five basic things based off of comments that you guys like to talk about here on the channel and basically things that I just think would be good to know if you're unfamiliar with modifying a third gen Tacoma. Now obviously I can't cover everything in this single video so if you're going to modify your truck definitely do your research. I also have a plethora of mod videos. I have a playlist of every single mod I've done to my own truck, so I'll have that link down below if you need more reference. So the first thing is tire size and specifically what the largest tire you can run on a stock Tacoma or basically a Tacoma with stock suspension before it starts rubbing either on the mud flaps, on the upper control arm, or on the front of the wheel well. And the answer to that question is a 265 70 R17 or a 265-75 R16 sized tire. Both of these tire sizes measure out to be about 31.6 inches in diameter, and I can attest to this being the largest tire size you can fit because I, for the longest time in this Tacoma, have been running 265-70 R17 tires, and before I leveled out my truck and I had stock suspension, I never had issues with it rubbing on any components. If you do decide to go with a larger tire, say a 285 size tire, that's when you're going to have to start thinking about lifting your third gen Tacoma, maybe leveling it, maybe doing a body mount chop. And in my experience, sometimes you'll have to also mess around with the caster a little bit. And one of the ways you can achieve this is by getting adjustable upper control arms. Of course, every single application is going to be different. You can have wheels with all sorts of different offsets. There's so many different tires you can get, but I would say the general consensus in the Tacoma community and specifically the third gen Tacoma community is that the largest tire you can run on stock suspension is a 265. The second thing is that if you decide to run an aftermarket front skid plate on your Tacoma, which I highly recommend the front skid plate if you decide to hit any trail or do any sort of off-roading because it really does offer great protection, make sure you do yourself and your mechanic a favor by getting a skid plate that has cutouts or at least access panels to your oil filter and access to your drain plug. I'm gonna talk about the oil change in these Tacomas in a little bit, but I will say it would be so annoying if you had to remove your skid plate, especially if it was steel, every time you had to change your oil. That would basically mean removing your skid plate at least every 10,000 miles if you're waiting that long between oil changes, which you should do it within 10,000 miles. So as simple as it sounds, if you decide to get a front skid plate, make sure you get one with those cutouts. It will make your life so much easier. The third thing is that if you decide to get different wheels for your Tacoma, check to see if you need to also get new lug nuts because in a lot of cases, your stock lug nuts may not fit your new wheels. 
I know this isn't a Tacoma specific issue, but it's still worth bringing up because a lot of people that have Tacomas end up modifying them and wheel modifications are really common. So make sure you get the right lug nuts. And also on top of that, if you're like me and you keep a breaker bar, a torque wrench, and the correct size socket for your lug nuts, which in my case is a 21 millimeter socket, make sure you also have the updated socket size if necessary. And you're gonna wanna have that if you have a different spare too. And I know that sounds really, really obvious, but again, something to keep in mind if you decide to shop around for some new wheels. The fourth thing to be aware of in terms of modifying your third gen Tacoma is that newer third gen Tacomas actually have an integrated sensor in the front grille. Some of these grills also come with OEM front cameras inside of them, but basically what the sensor is and what the camera is for too is enhanced safety features for the new Toyotas like adaptive cruise control and emergency stopping and stuff like that. So if your grill does have this sensor, which I believe is in all 2018 and up Tacomas, make sure the new grill you get also has a compatible sensor if you want to keep your safety features, of course. Not only that, but the sensor is calibrated to work at a certain height. So if you get a new grill where the sensor location is changed, that might affect how your safety features actually work in your truck and they may not work at all. The same thing goes with lifting your truck or even adding bigger tires because that increases the height of the front of your truck. So keep that in mind when you're doing modifications to your truck, even if it's not just directly to your grill. I will say from personal experience, I have leveled out the front of the truck so that it basically sits at the exact same height as the rear of my truck, but that means the front did get lifted a little bit. And technically my sensor height changed by maybe about an inch, inch and a half, and I have seen no issues whatsoever. A lot of other people who have lifted their trucks say that they don't run into issues. So it seems to be more rare when you get issues with the sensor when you're messing with the height of your truck. There's probably a certain threshold where it's okay that the sensor height changes, but again, just good information to keep in the back of your head. The fifth and last thing to know about is actually about your key fob. Now your key fob may seem like a really simple thing, but it actually has one really cool feature you may not know about. Basically when your key fob runs out of battery and you have a keyless Tacoma with a push button like I do, it's still possible to start your truck with your stock OEM Toyota key. All you have to do is take your key and hold the Toyota logo next to the button and your truck should start up. Now, the reason this could be an issue for anyone is because in the third gen Tacoma community, there are a lot of mods that involve changing the housing that your key sits in. I have taken apart my stock key myself and installed one of these kits because I wanted a smaller key, but because of that, I lose this feature. And of course, this is a safety feature and I don't wanna lose this and I don't wanna be stranded when my key battery dies. So what I have done personally is I kept all the parts of my stock OEM key assembly and I keep them in the center console over here and I have all the tools which are basically just allen wrenches to take apart my modified key fob and put together my original key fob so that if i ever run into that situation i can just make my old key fob and make it work as it was designed to i know this might not be a great solution for everyone but i just wanted to mention it in case you were thinking about modifying your key so those are just some basic modifications i could think of that i wish i knew before owning my third gen tacoma but of course if you guys have any other suggestions for new to Tacoma owners, definitely leave them in the comment section down below. Now, maintenance is obviously a really important thing with owning any vehicle, and the great thing about having a newer Toyota is that maintenance is pretty straightforward. There is still a lot of information to be aware of though, and I wanted to compile a few tips I had in terms of maintenance on the third gen Tacomas. So first off, every new Tacoma will come with this book. You'll probably find this in your glove box, and this is basically a maintenance guide that has a literal checklist of everything that you need to be aware of at what mileage and at what time. This way you can always know and be aware of what service you need to perform at what mileage. This has been such a useful tool to me. I use it every 5,000 miles when I'm doing my own maintenance, but if you're not really a fan of having a lot of paper lying around, what's great about these third gen Tacomas is that they actually remind you every 5,000 miles, yeah, they're smart enough to do this now, that your maintenance is due. There's basically a warning light that comes on at around 4,500 miles since your last maintenance and it's nothing to be alarmed of. You can turn it off in settings or it gets turned off if you take it to the dealership or another shop and you have these services performed. 
So now I'm gonna talk about some specific maintenance services that a lot of people in the third gen community talk about or have questions on. Of course, this video isn't gonna be super, super detailed about these maintenance services, but I hope this is useful information if you're just starting out in your third gen Tacoma. So when it comes to changing your oil in these third gen Tacomas, Toyota recommends that you use a synthetic oil and that you change it at least every 10,000 miles. And the oil weight you should use is 0W20. Now I have friends who have third gen Tacomas that actually use conventional oil and they'll just change it more often. I personally use synthetic and I change my oil every 5,000 miles. However, Toyota's recommendation is only 10,000 miles. A big question I have gotten on the channel before is, is it worth it to do your own oil changes or should you take it to a dealership or a shop and have it performed for you. If you're a DIYer like me, changing the oil in these Tacomas is not that difficult. Again, it's a Toyota so it's not that complicated. And if you were to do it at home, as long as you have your gloves, your drain pan, and the necessary tools you'll need to remove the oil filter, obviously you'll need your oil, your oil filter, and an oil filter wrench. But that's really it. And I actually have a full video where I show you how to change your oil on a 3.5 liter V6 third gen Tacoma. It's here on my channel and I'll have it linked down below if you're interested in seeing how that's done. Prior to hitting 20,000 miles on my Tacoma, however, I was actually getting my oil changed at the dealership because I was utilizing my free Toyota Care services. If you don't know what Toyota Care is, every new Toyota and every new Tacoma, of course, that comes from the dealership comes with a two year or 25,000 mile Toyota Care plan that includes up to five free services, unless I think you can upgrade to three years and 30,000 miles, four years and 40,000 miles or something like that. But at baseline, you'll get two years and 25,000 miles. And if you have that two year plan, you'll get two free oil changes, one at 10,000 miles and one at 20,000 miles. I was taking advantage of that because it was kind of a use it or lose it deal. So if you have Toyota Care, that's another option you can keep in mind in terms of changing your oil. But now of course, since my Toyota Care has run out, I do all my oil changes myself. Speaking of oil, I wanted to talk about today's video sponsor, Haviland, because this is the exact oil I use in my Tacoma and it's fantastic in so many different ways. First off, this box is six quarts, which is really, really nice if you have the 3.5 liter V6 Tacoma like I do, because when you change your oil, it's recommended that you refill it to anywhere between six to 6.2 quarts. Of course, you should check your oil level, but having a six quart box is so convenient if you have this truck, because most conventional oils come in five quart bottles, which honestly is just kind of annoying. Basically with Haviland, you get more oil per container. The Smart Chains box is eco-friendly as you can see, and it also has a glug free pour so you can make sure you're pouring in the exact amount of oil you want. And just on top of all of that, Haviland is known for protecting against sludge and deposit buildup and prevents low speed pre-ignition. So I love it, especially because I plan to keep my Tacoma forever. So any sort of preventative maintenance I can do, I do. So if you can't tell already, I'm a box oil kind of gal and Haviland has been so great so far in my Tacoma and it's been amazing in my Land Cruiser. I swear it has restored some lost engine power because that thing used to be really, really slow and now it's a little bit better, but that's for another video. Anyways, thanks again to Haviland for sponsoring today's video and making an awesome product for us Tacoma owners. Another service for the third gen Tacoma I wanted to talk about today only applies to the automatic transmission. So if you have a manual transmission, you can skip this part of the video. I have a lot to say about this because I've kind of dealt with this issue with the other third gen Tacoma, the 2020 TRD Pro I've shown on the channel in the past. And let me preface this all by saying I previously and honestly still kind of do, don't have too, too much knowledge about sealed transmissions. Sealed transmissions, which is what these third gen Tacomas have have are actually pretty difficult to work on and checking fluid levels isn't that straightforward. If you're at the point where you need to get your automatic transmission fluid changed, which honestly I need to get done in this truck, I recommend you go to the dealership to get it done unless you know what you're doing. Unfortunately, in these third gen Tacomas, you can't just pull a dipstick to check your transmission fluid levels like the good old days. So checking the fluid level is a lot more involved. Of course, you have to get it up to temperature and it's really easy to 
misread what level it's at and therefore you can underfill it which is really really not great. I don't really want to get into why this is bad but if you want to hear the whole story on that I do have two videos about the transmission issues we were having on the 2020 TRD Pro. It ultimately ended up being about low transmission fluid but it was hard to diagnose even at the Toyota dealership the first time we went because sealed transmissions again are difficult to work on. So unless you're a Toyota tech or a master Toyota tech or you're just an expert in sealed transmissions, learn from my mistake and I just recommend you get this one done at the dealership. The third item I wanted to talk about were some surface items that you can actually DIY because they require no tools and I personally don't think you need to pay to get these things done unless of course you have Toyota Care and you want to use that up. In my opinion, these are things that you can just easily check yourself and then buy yourself and replace if necessary. So first off, the cabin air filter is just located in the glove box and it's pretty easy to remove. You just pull some tabs, take it out, inspect it, and replace if necessary. The engine air filter is located in the upper air box under the hood. And again, this is one where you just pull your old one out and drop your new one in. Or if you have a TRD filter like me, take it out, clean it, put it back in. Fluid levels are also easy to check because there's a lot of room in the engine bay and it says on the container when you're low. So you could just visually inspect all of these and refill them as needed. And if you have a jack or a lift in your garage, rotating your tires and changing your brakes is really easy to do as well and it can save you an arm and a leg. So again, there are a lot of services I did not mention in this video or else it would be super, super long, but I just wanted to keep it simple and give some basic, mostly starting out Tacoma information when it comes to maintenance on these third gens. The last topic I want to cover in today's video, just because I thought it would be useful information, are known issues about the third generation Tacoma. And I say issues in quotation marks because some of these seem like issues, but they're really just user error because they can be a little bit confusing. And there are other real issues with the Tacoma, but before you get alarmed, all of these issues either have been resolved or are really, really minor. So let's just start out with some of these real issues and recalls that Toyota has done for for the third gen Tacoma. Starting with the automatic transmission, now honestly just as a disclaimer, let me say this is not a real issue even though I just said we were going to talk about real issues. It was more of a complaint that people had and Toyota did address these complaints or this issue which is why I thought it would fall kind of under this section. There are a decent number of third gen Tacoma owners who do not like how the shift points in these Tacomas have been programmed. Now Toyota programs these shift points to advertise the best fuel economy because that's obviously a driving part of their sales and advertisement and of course getting great fuel economy is awesome but people have said that this can cause what feels like delayed shifting in the third gen Tacoma and gear hunting. Again, I want to make it clear that there have been no real issues with the quality of the transmission that Toyota uses itself. It's really just the programming of the shifting points. The people who have wanted a fix to this have gotten devices to either increase their throttle response or a lot of people go to the aftermarket tunes. In the most simple sense, these aftermarket tunes basically reprogram the shifting points of your truck. I will say that I personally haven't experienced any of these issues in my own truck, especially after the first thousand miles, because I have heard that the ECUs are programmed to actually kind of learn your driving style and adjust the shift points based off of that. I'm not 100% sure of the validity of that in these specific Tacomas, but a lot of you guys ask me why I haven't gotten an aftermarket tune, and the answer is I'm happy with how the truck drives and I'm happy with my gas mileage. Last note about the automatic transmission in the third gen Tacoma. Tacomas, there was a TSB released either in late 2019 or early 2020 that addressed this shifting issue. So if you have an older third gen Tacoma, you may not be on the latest TSB and you might still be having these issues. The second issue is a real one and it's definitely been the most serious issue so far in the third gen Tacoma, but luckily it's been resolved and it isn't specific to the third gen Tacoma. Now this issue is about the recalled fuel pump that applies to some 2016 to 2020 Tacomas and actually my 2019 was affected by this. Toyota was really good about this. It was really simple. Basically they just performed the recall service for free. They replaced the faulty fuel pumps and the issue with the faulty fuel pumps in the first place is that 
they could cause your engine to stall and then your truck not to start, which obviously is a serious problem. Again, this issue was not localized to the third gen Tacoma. A ton of Toyota and Lexus vehicles had this fuel pump recall, but Toyota did replace it for free. And if you're wondering if your truck fell under this recall and you haven't gotten this done yet, there is a website where you can look up your VIN and see if your truck falls under this. The third and last real issue with some third gen Tacomas that I want to talk about today was the leaking brake light. My 2019 also falls under this. I actually just got this recall in the mail and it's 2021. I actually didn't even realize this was a problem because my truck hasn't had the issue that some other people's trucks have had or basically the seal around the brake light, I believe, I think is just either non-existent from the factory or has some sort of fault, which can cause water to leak into the cab. So that really sucks but I heard if you're affected by it Toyota will replace your headliner if it got damaged by that and basically what they do is put a new seal around that brake light. So those are just some of the real issues that the third gen Tacomas have experienced. There's a lot of other small issues but guys it's a Toyota and so far from 2016 when the first third gen Tacomas come out there have been no big problems that Toyota hasn't addressed. In my experience these trucks have so far lived up to Toyota standards of reliability and just having minimal problems in general. So lastly, there are some things in the third gen Tacomas that really do seem like issues, especially if you're a new third gen owner. But basically these things really just boil down to user error. And guys, I'm also guilty of being concerned about some of these things at first. So I thought I would mention some of them in this video. So sometimes about five hours after you've turned your truck off, you may walk past your truck and hear a low humming noise. And it's kind of loud and it's kind of concerning the first time you hear it. But luckily, this is normal. This is just the truck running an EVAP test, and this is all laid out in the manual as well. So if you don't believe me, you can check it out in the manual. I promise your Tacoma is fine. Another thing is if you disconnect or remove the battery for a certain amount of time, your ECU will actually reset and your miles till empty may look higher than what they actually are. This is because the truck will revert back to factory settings. If your truck is stopped and you decide to turn off some features like traction control or auto limited slip differential, when you get Get on the highway your cruise control may not work there are a couple people who have reported this i haven't tried it but i have heard this before if you hold the lock button on your key fob and then press unlock twice your key will actually turn off it's really the communication signal that will turn off i've actually used this feature a lot because when i go surfing i like to lock my key up in a lock box and it's nice knowing that someone can't use my keyless entry to actually enter my truck and to get the signal back you basically just press the lock or unlock button so I know this video was a lot of information, yet I still obviously didn't cover everything. So I hope this helped if you're a new third gen Tacoma owner. Welcome to the Tacoma community if you are. And to all my other veteran Tacoma owners out there, leave a comment down below on this video if you think I missed anything important. If you want to connect more with me and get some more Tacoma content, you can follow me on my Instagram. It's at Chloe Kuo Taco. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.